Hello friends and welcome to the first in what will likely be a fairly long tutorial series on uh, Fast API. In this video we're just going to do a very basic introduction of how to get started using Fast API, creating a project from scratch, setting up some of your first routes. I'm going to show you some of one of the, the nice little, that's not a hidden benefit, but it's something that you, you wouldn't expect to get uh, right out of the box. So first things first, here's the, uh, the page for Fast API. Uh, the link will be included in the description below. As you can see here, it calls itself um, a high performance, easy to learn, fast to code, ready for production uh, web framework. It is based in Python. You have to have at least 3.6. Um, it is uh, a much lower level framework as opposed to something like Django uh, which is going to be more opinionated. It's it's more like Flask or um, let's say Express for for JavaScript. In that you you can kind of create your routes as you need. You can create your controllers, things like that, as you need. There's no real there's no real set way you need to do it. Um, there are conventions and things like that, but there is no set way to do it. Uh, it is built on top of Starlet um, as a, a little skeleton ASCII framework that it, that it uses. And it use it makes heavy use of Pydantic for uh, type checking, data validation, you know things like that. So, without further ado, let's get into some code. I'm going to open up a PowerShell. We'll go into YouTube, and we will first create our directory. We don't have anything set up. We're setting up our entire app from scratch right now. So we need to create the directory first. And then what we're gonna need to do after that is we're going to need to create the virtual environment. Um, uh, most of you in here, I would imagine, have Python installed already. I'm on version 3.10. If you don't, um, go install uh, the latest version of Python. Um, for those of you who already have Python installed in your system and have done a Python project before, you know that the first thing that you should always do is set up a virtual environment. Now, I'm going to use pip. Uh, you can use pip envy, you can use poetry. I've used all three. Uh, for something simple like this, uh, I see no reason not to use uh, a tool like pip. It's, it's very simple, it's very straightforward. After that, uh, this is all we're going to need the PowerShell for. Um, I'm going to open up uh, PyCharm. That is the, the editor of choice for me. Um, I, I started using PyCharm before VS Code kind of kind of blew up. Uh, I already paid for it. So this is the one that I use. Uh, apologies if you're a VS Code user. Uh, nothing against you. I wish I could... Um, I wish I could start using it. Um, I just... I, I know the key bindings here. I'm much more comfortable with, uh, with PyCharm. So we're going to set up our requirements.txt file and we're going to end up installing fast API and we're going to install Uvicorn, which is the, uh, the ASCII server that we're going to use to serve our fast API app. We'll come into the terminal here. We're going to do end scripts activate and we're going to pip install dash r requirements.txt. While this is installing, this is for those of you who are using PyCharm, I'm going to set up the Python interpreter. It's going to point to the one, depending on how you have it set up, it might just automatically find it and point to it by default. Um, I like to do that just because it'll give some nice code completion that you might not otherwise get. Okay, everything is installed. Now what we need to do is we need to create our main.py file. So let's go into here and we will create main.py. So now this is where the, the, the base of your app is going to live. You'll see there are going to be situations where we'll have our app in, in multiple files, uh, multiple packages. You know, there's going to be a whole lot of stuff that's going to come into play. But this is when you're starting out and building a simple fast API app, it's all going to take place in here. So first we're going to import fast API and we're going to instantiate our app. There. Now we have a fast API app.
good for us. The first thing we need to do is we need to set up a route. So we're going to use the app.get decorator and we're going to declare our route. It's going to be our root route. We're going to return a very simple message, hello world. And I'm going to go back and change this because the single versus double quotes is bothering me. And anytime I use black on this, it ends up reformatting to double quotes. So I'm just going to continue to use double quotes. Great. Now we have our app set up. Now what do we do? This is the sort of situation where if you have used Django before, you would run python manage.py run server. We need to come down into the terminal and we're going to instead use Uvicorn. So here we're going to do Uvicorn main colon app. That's the first part of the command that we're going to work on. And I'll explain what each of these things does. So first things first, main refers to the fact that we're calling this file here main.py. App refers to the fact that we're calling our app, app. If we were to rename this, hello, and we were to rename this, world, surprise, surprise, we would do uvicorn hello world, and it would run. We can see it ran. Great, good for us. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna change this back though, because I'm not gonna build a fast API app called hello world. There. So we've got our Uvicorn set up, main app. Now there are two other flags that I'm gonna tell you about. There, there are other things that you can you know, pass in as flags to Uvicorn, but the first one is going to be port equals. You can, you can choose whichever port you want. You can choose, I mean, not whichever one you want, but you, know, you can choose 5,000, you can choose 3,000, you can choose 8001 if you're already running 8000 somewhere else, whatever you want. Um, the default port that it uses is 8000. I'm going to stick with that, but you can set that flag. The other flag that we care about is the reload flag. Now, what we want to have happen is we want, we don't want to have to hit control C and then up enter every time we change something in the, in the files. Um, that's where the reload flag comes in. It will look for any changes that are saved in your entire app. And if something updates, then it will automatically restart the server, which is, you know, it's, it's, I mean, you would go crazy if you didn't have that. So there we have our app up and running and let's go to localhost 8,000 and I'm going to bring the window over here. Let's scrunch this up just a little bit. There, we have our app running. Yay, hello world. Good, we're good. Now, this is, this is a great start. Um, the, th the other thing that I'm gonna show you though, um, and if we wanted to app.post, we'll do async def post, return message, hello from the post route there. And you can see on the very bottom there that the server restarted. We're good. Now, the thing that the problem that we're going to have with this is we can't actually submit a post request from the browser. Uh, there are tools like Postman, uh, Insomnia, things like that. Um, and, and honestly, I mean, I took a, a, a production ready not a production ready, but it was a, a course from Brad Traversy on building um, product like professional apps in Mongo Express uh, backend. In that, he sets up an entire Postman uh, setup for documentation for like it's it was crazy the level of detail it was phenomenal. The course itself is phenomenal, and Brad Traversy is phenomenal. But what what Fast API gives us is it's a nice alternative to it and it comes right out of the box. And I'm going to show you exactly what that is now. If we go to localhost 8000 and we type in slash and we go to docs and we hit enter. Here we have swagger documentation. Swagger docs. 
Swagger documentation for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, Swagger docs. Um, it comes out of the box with fast API. You can see we have our get route, we have our post route. So we don't have to worry about installing Postman. We don't have to worry about doing anything like that. This gives us the ability to have this documentation right away. If we came in here and did app.put async def put return message hello from the put route. We refresh. The one thing that we don't get is automatic reloading because this is not, you know, React or Vue or Svelte. We have to refresh, but now we have our put route. We hit try it out and we hit execute. And there we go. We got a message of hello from the put route. This is, I mean, I can't, I can't stress enough just, just how much of a game changer this right here is. I mean, it's, it's great to be able to write this sort of, uh, this sort of an app this easily. But just from the perspective of having the documentation, not worrying about setting up uh, Postman uh, routes and things like that, this is, this is just absolutely phenomenal. And we'll see in future videos that we can actually have authenticated routes in here as well. There are ways to set that up. There's different ways to organize this. Um, this is, I mean, we can see this is called root, but if we call it base get route, and we hit save and we refresh. This automatically updates here. Um, we can try description equals this is our first route. I'm, just, I'm showing you all stuff that, that we're going to see as we as we move forward. But if we look at this, we see we get documentation here. We can say deprecated equals true. And we refresh and automatically we get that this is a deprecated route. You can still do it, but it's deprecated, so it yells at you. There's a lot that, that really is phenomenal with this. Um, but yeah, so that's that's it for now. Um, this is our basic Fast API app. It's, it's that simple. Um, in the next video, we're gonna touch on uh, path parameters. Um, you know, if you wanna have certain variables that go uh, go in the path, like um, not here, we would do ID, if you want to pass in an ID parameter as you're, you know, you're updating something. Um, this code will be in a, uh, a GitHub repo. I'm going to update it with each lesson um, as we go along so you can follow along. Um, I think for now, though, that's it. Uh, I will see you in the next video.